is part of the humbling. He began to stun out. He began to preach to the Gentiles. He brought them into the fold, you know, talked about how they were grafted in with the Jews, with God's chosen people. And I doubt for one second that at that time when he first began, that he could realize that in 2000. And 17, that to this day, the work that he did, the words that he gave, would be reaching and impacting the entire world. When he began in these metropolis areas where ships would come in, where he would do these small things, the work that he did was far reaching. I don't know if God told him just how far reaching it was going to be or not. But what I do know is that he was obedient and the fruit of his obedience lingers on today. And that touches on something that I've, I've run up against is the um, idea and in, in putting it very badly is the idea that God almost speaks in riddles. And, and that's something that comes out of a frustration of... Like the parables. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. But it feeling like, you know, you've gotten that word and, and all of that. And then it it kind of goes and then it passes and the part of it passes. And you're thinking, okay, well, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Or this didn't play out the way that mm-hmm. I felt like. And then you go and reexamine what you mm-hmm. felt like you heard. And then it's like, okay, then you turn again. And what is it that you want? And um, I think that it can be, uh, that can be kind of a tough thing because you're imagining or thinking or, or feeling like this is going to play out a certain way. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always do that. Um, I think it can also be particularly hard as well, it seems to me, is when you get that really strong word mm-hmm. um, and then you're, you you feel like you've got that clearly, like this is what I'm going to achieve or this is what I feel like the Lord is calling me to achieve, but then you get into your the daily grind of it coming about and it, it's you know, months and yes, years absolutely. and it's like, okay, where is this word going to yes. transpire? Because that's not coming about. Sure. And I think about the scripture that says that a day is to the Lord, like a thousand years and a thousand years, like a day, his reference to time is definitely not ours. And trusting, like I said earlier, he's saying today, will you trust me? Will you follow me? It's either yes or no. Either we choose to trust him all the way, or we may as well not even go down that road at all. But do you know that going down the path of trust and faith and obedience is really the sure path? Because man's plans will fail, and God already knows what is up ahead. And we can look at a course and we can say, I like this path because it makes sense. One plus one is two, and two plus two is four, and four plus four is eight. And if I continue going down this path, I know exactly what's coming ahead. I can calculate it. I know what to expect. And I like a sense of security, so I'm going to choose that path. Or we can look down the path of faith, which I've been on so many times, and we're saying one plus one doesn't look like it equals two here. Or how is it that all of a sudden one plus one equaled four? God has a way of doing things that we cannot always understand or explain, but he is always right. You see, it could be that the way that we saw as best and calculated has a lot of bumps and a lot of setbacks along the way. And God's path could be a detour, but it gets us to where we need to where we need to be doing what we need to do that gives us an ultimate sense of satisfaction and fulfillment deep within our soul, deep within our spirit and who we really are compared to saying, nah, forget it, God, I think I'll go my way instead. Usually what we end up finding is when we have that attitude, at some point or another, things get hard enough to where we say, yeah, I think I should do it God's way. God's way is really always the best way. Though we do not understand the way, we do understand the one directing the way. And we do know him. We may not know the end result, but we do know God. And we know that he is love. We know that he is faithful. We know that he is wise. We know that he loves us. And putting our trust in his love for us is really where it's at. That's where the rubber meets the road. Do I trust your love for me enough to jump? Just like I had made that analogy uh, earlier in the show with teaching my children how to swim and having them trust me enough to jump in, that I would catch them, and that everything would be fine. So many times God takes us down a certain path, and 
And there may be multiple times when he says, okay, jump. And you just look at him and question, are you going to catch me? Are you going to be good to me? Or am I going to be safe? Am I going to be okay? And over and over and over again, God says, yes, I've got you. I can handle this. I'm, I'm way ahead of you in this game. Trust me. And the, <laughs> and so me being completely human, this is my response. Okay, I did, and I got water up my nose, and it didn't. It came to pass, and somewhat it felt. It looked like you know your hand was in it, but I'm still going, and it's not. It didn't turn out the way that I thought it would, and now I'm becoming discouraged, and now my prayer life is affected, and now my my faith is is impacted and it's it's the you know persevere in faith mm-hmm. question as well as you know I'm 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 lagging in my faith because I feel like my perseverance has not rendered results mm-hmm. that seems to be a pretty that can be a pretty tough uh thing and challenging thing I think to face when you get into what seems like a, a lull mm-hmm. you know I was reading something today talking about how heaven is selfless And there is no selfishness or selfish ambition in heaven. And that is one of the wonderful things about heaven because then there is no hate. There is no jealousy. There are none of these things that are destructive. And sometimes we can get confused and the water can get muddy because we expect God to do it a certain way. And when he doesn't sometimes our faith kind of is in the end result and not really in the process and it could be sometimes that God's really wanting to do something in the process and he's not really concerned about the result and the process we learn to become hopefully even more selfless even more selfish more um, God focused rather than being focused and self-centered upon ourselves. But I want this. I want this. And God is saying, but you don't need that. But I want it this way. This is how it's supposed to be. I think sometimes I've really made God laugh. I mean, I could just hear a belly aching laugh in my soul because I think it should happen a certain way. And I think sometimes God just laughs and he's like, oh, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, that's not. 